Hi Gemini, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is your weekly love reading for February 11th to the 17th. We're going to pull a Celtic cross with the Tarot Mucha Tarot deck, and then I'm going to clarify with the Colette Baron Reed Wisdom of the Oracle, Oracle Cards, um, Angela Hartfield's Whispers of Love, and Doreen Virtue's Romance Angels. <clears throat> All right, this is for Gemini. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 11th to the 17th, please. Can we please get a positive reading for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, February 11th to the 17th? Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the 11th to the 17th in the form of Celtic Cross, please. That's my... Okay, maybe not. All right, that's Angel Gabriel with the Judgment card, blowing his horn, resurrecting the dead. Basically, in love and romance here, we're going to take that as someone coming back. A reunion of some kind. Someone from your past coming back. Two fives here speaks to conflict. Um, again... You've got this person coming back, and then on your hand, there's like other perspective here because it was separate. It's either them or you, I don't know. I feel like this is the person coming back. This is kind of feeling this spilt milk energy here, being in a relationship already and feeling like you missed out on something or that you're regretful about something. And then you're getting some kind of very enthusiastic, loving, high energy news that's, you know, going to come in the form of text, communications, whatever. But it's going to end up here with the five of pentacles, lack of faith, lack of trust. On the bottom, we've got six of pentacles about dependency. Okay, so you may have a dependency. doesn't matter of who's coming back into the picture. You have responsibilities. Okay, so, whoa, two cards popped out. Yep. Okay, this is committed. Okay, Ten of Pentacles to lineage, legacy, all these types of things. And um, trying to keep head above water, being very busy, and could speak to juggling finances. Trying to maintain harmony and balance in your life. On the bottom, Four of Pentacles closed off. Unreceptive. Again, this is for Gemini Sun. Okay, all these cards. Again, someone from your past coming back. Feeling victorious, six of wands on the bottom. Could even speak to being liberated and free now. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. For February 11th to the 17th in the form of a Celtic cross, please. Can we please get a positive reading for Gemini. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the week of 11th to the 17th. Too many cards. More conflict. Expressing yourself, speaking your truth, offering a relationship. There's another offering. That offered of the cup is there given. The other person's not seeing it because, or you're not seeing it because this, the cups that are empty there is spilled. You're focused and fixated on that. But then temperance about a need for more balance in your life. Tower moment. Ah, tower moment can be anything from a fit of rage to a breakup or some kind of news that you find out that shakes up your world or breaking down of some old way of thinking all right generally it's a an omen of you know danger trouble and destruction of something all right gemini this is for you 
11 to the 17th in the form of a Celtic cross, please. I'm going to end the shuffle. There it is, on the bottom. Expansion, wanting more, two of wands. Situation, hangman. Challenge, five of pentacles. Consciously, page of swords. Foundation here, subconscious, lover's card, ruled over by Gemini. Recent past, strength, recent future, chariot. You right now, eight of swords around you. Four of pentacles, hopes and fears, death. Outcome, nine of pentacles. All right. So we've got the hangman energy here. We've got a lot of major arcana cards here, actually. So these all three, four, no, three, past, situation, recent future, subconscious, and hopes and fears, all fake cards. One, two, three, four, five fake cards. Okay, that's a lot for this week. What is a fake card? Well, it means major arcana means major secret. So for the period of this week, it's going to have a strong influence. Everything else is free will. And, you know, it's about your karma, other people's karmas working together, planetary influences working together, and who knows what else. All going in together to, you know, make a certain right time and right place for everything that happens, however it's going to play out. So those are the influences of the Major Arcana cards here. Hangman is a Major Arcana card. It's about the sacrifice, sacrificing of yourself, your time for other people's benefit, basically. And also speaks to an energy of feeling sometimes stuck, like you're always giving and you don't see things moving forward and you're kind of always in stasis here. Um, so that others can benefit from you. And then as a challenge, you've got the five of pentacles. The challenge here is that you won't get out of this kind of energy of, you know, being the one who sacrifices of themselves. And, you know, there's an, an enlightened element here with this halo around his head because he's doing something, you know, in with good, good motivation to help others as well. Now, the challenge to get out of this stuckness is the fact that there is a lake, lake, there's a lake, there's a lack of faith, lack of trust, okay, in marriage, relationships, love in general here with the five of pentacles, it's almost like being rebellious and staying out of this on purpose. And it also speaks to when you have a lack of faith and lack of trust in love and romance or relationships. Well, you can have lots of relationships, but it's kind of always manufacturing this kind of manifesting this relationship that never quite sees it to um, completion because you're non-committal. So you always seem to find people with problems or issues that would stop you from being committal, committed and them from being committed. Right. So that's a challenge. This kind of being in stasis stuck energy because of this challenge of lack of faith, lack of trust. Consciously, you got Page of Swords. In your mind, you've been keeping an eye on somebody. Either it could be that or someone who's a youthful energy, someone who might be even a child. It's about uh, collecting and relaying information. And Swords are about Le Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So I'm figuring that's you. And it speaks to the intellect, thought processing, and communications. With the Page of Swords, it's about keeping tabs on somebody or something, okay? This is my spy card. I have a few, but this is one of the most, you know, major spy cards here. So it looks like you're keeping an eye on who? On this person over here. All right. And um, basically just seeing what they like, seeing what they're up to. It's a little bit of a creep factor here if it goes that way, but, you know, it's just finding out everything you can about somebody before you make a move, kind of, okay? In an almost, you know, like you're studying them kind of way. In the foundation, you've got the lover's card. So there is a romantic kind of spark here, romantic feelings. But it also speaks to having to make a choice. It speaks to your own personal alignment between your, you know, mind and your, sorry, your subconscious, the feminine energy, the male energy, the spiritual energy, your spirit consciousness, your self-consciousness, and for all of those things to be in harmony together for a good balance. 
also speaks, as I said, a choice that you have to make possibly in love. Okay. This card, Lovers, is ruled over by Gemini. As here, we've got Angel Raphael, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now, in the recent past, you've got the Strength card. Strength card can be about either someone who's the sign of Leo, someone who's extremely strong in a support system, okay, or you're extremely strong in a support system, could be with this Hangman card of Sacrifice. And it also speaks to kind of being in a dangerous situation or friends with someone possibly a little bit dangerous, you know, because this woman is standing next to a, sitting next to a lion. Sometimes the tarot will portray the hand in the mouth, um, the woman's hand in the mouth. It's about, you know, courage, strength, but it's also about possibly being in a dangerous situation. And uh, other than that, it could speak to, you know, uh, about some kind of way of thinking about love and relationships. It's almost immovable. Um, yeah, and also to control your animal nature, your animal instincts, your, your base kind of desires, carnal nature, things like that. In the recent future, you've got another major arcana card. This is the Chariot, ruled over by Cancer, the sign of Cancer, if that means anything to you guys. And the Cancer um, ruling over the Chariot here. The Chariot has more, the two sphinxes, also more about balance here. And it's a Kingmaker card, meaning that when you go out to battle... There's confidence and conviction and that victory is assured and because of that victory you come back a king. Now, this is also about travel and movement and change happening and this is fated to happen. In the you right now, you got eight of swords. This woman is blindfolded and, you know, tied up a little bit with the swords kind of placed around her. This is just about fear. Fear and self-consciousness and insecurities, all those types of things, or even restrictions placed by other people's expectations and how you're feeling about all of these kind of emotions and thoughts on you that's making you feel like you can't move. It can also speak to, like others, anything to do with fear and restriction, okay? Whether it be in a very dangerous situation or whether it be in a mild thing with people expecting things from you. And it's saying there's a castle in the background. All this woman has to do is take off the blindfold and, you know, tiptoe around those swords and go home. But because of the fear factor, this person can't see clearly and can't make a rational decision right now because of the fear taking over. Now, around you, you've got four of pentacles. And you see this person holding on to their pentacles very tight. This is the card of greed, miserliness, and basically that this person's worked very hard for these pentacles and so they don't trust people, there's paranoia, there's suspicion, distrust, this kind of feeling like they don't want to do anything, they don't want to budge, they don't want to move an inch, they want to hold on to their pentacles very tightly. And they don't want to invest, they don't want to open up, they don't want to try to do this or that, they just want to be, you know, almost paranoid holding on to their coins real tight. Um, it also speaks to in love and romance about having a roaming eye kind of energy because when you translate that kind of not open, unreceptive, closed off emotions and yet, you know, you're still active in love and romance, well, then it could speak to kind of dealing with more than one person sometimes where you have a person but you have a roaming eye and you're keeping eyes on other people as well when you're already in something. So that can also speak to the Four of Pentacles energy. Now, this could be someone around you or you're kind of around this energy. I feel like with the Eight of Swords and with the Four of Pentacles, you're afraid about losing, you know, because of this lack of faith. You see, you got both the Four of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles. It's like this lack of faith, lack of trust, this lack, and then the Four of Pentacles. It feels like you don't trust people. And that's all there is to it. You don't trust people and you're scared to be open and receptive. So you're completely closed off. This fear is making you completely shut down, closed off. In the hopes and fears, you've got this death card and it's ruled over by the sign of Scorpio. You could be um, interested in someone by the sign of Scorpio. You could be afraid of death. You could be hoping for the ending to some situation. 
And because just this death card, what happens is with this ending, karmic ending to something, when it ends, something new begins. So this kind of implied rebirth after the death card, a new fresh start kind of, you know, because once you die, it's dead, it's done. So however that resonates for you, whether that be Scorpio, whether that be an ending to something or f a fear of an ending or death, however that resonates for you. In the outcome, you got nine of pentacles. The nine of pentacles is about this ideal single person, very much, you know, happy, independent, self-sufficient, enjoying life, the kind of person, you know, who's got their house and their um, things and their finances in order and who are enjoying being unattached and their um, financial comforts and their social circles. It's good. They're, they're really happy. It's a very positive card to get in a reading with the nine of pentacles. And then there's the bird of spirit kind of calling to them and saying there's more to life than nine of pentacles. And there's the ten of pentacles. And the ten of pentacles is a whole bunch of responsibilities that come with the ten of pentacles. Because then you get into family, legacies, inheritance, all those kind of lineage, all these kinds of major roots, deep roots. Nine of pentacles is when you've done good on your own. Before you meet that other person or significant other, or before kids, before all the responsibilities to your tribe, your community, all these things where you have to take care of people. Nine of Pentacles, you're taking care of yourself and you're, you're doing good at it. You're, you're doing well, okay? So let's take a peek at the bottom of the deck. Got two of wands. One is fixed to the castle. The other one's free and there's a globe in the hand. This is a card of expansion, wanting more out of life. Whatever it is that you have, wanting more. Looking out into the globe, could be like Facebook, social media, whatever. Keeping tabs, just like this Page of Swords energy, on what's out there. And then you've got, oh, somebody you're passionate about, Ace of Wands. So you got one hand here, right? And then you want to offer this wand to somebody or somebody's offering a wand. Some passionate new beginning that's making you want to create. The King of Wands is all about someone who's attractive, um, hot-blooded, confident, going out there, makes things happen. Someone who makes from vision to manifestation, you know, they're an idea person, they're an action person, they love to get new ideas and be creative and make new businesses, new ideas come to fruition. Extremely attractive. But looks like here with the moon card, we've got another fake card. It can speak to secrets, hidden feelings, the subconscious, moodiness, depression, isolation, um, psychic, intuitive abilities, all of these types of things. Uh, also that you can't see everything that's lurking in the shadows. So it could speak to, you know, some kind of fear factor, danger factor there as well. And then you got the Knight of Pentacles. Could be a Virgo. And it's an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. But this is ruled over by the sign of Virgo. Could speak to travel, a change of residence, changing your job, moving, selling your house, all these types of things. As a person, someone who is also unattached. Uh, no kids, no husband, no wife, somebody who is slow moving, methodical and gets to where they need to go eventually. And out of all the knights, this would be the most committed. And look at that knight of pentacles leading straight to 10 of pentacles, commitment, lineage, all these things. You know, how I said nine of pentacles. That's where the outcome is at right now. 10 of pentacles coming afterwards. So it looks like a lot of wands energy with passion, fire, male energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But since this is your reading, it looks like it's a lot of growth, a lot of creativity, a lot of action, and a lot of passion going on into this. And then there's the moon card with, you know, secret, hidden, intuitive, psychic things going on underneath the surface. Things that are hidden that are not seen. And then the Knight of Pentacles can speak to a message being related, communication, an offering of something, whether it be a relationship or whatnot, I don't know. But it also is ruled over by the sign of Virgo. And then you've got the Ten of Pentacles. This is the complete package here with the completion of the Pentacles. The grandfather, grandparents, grandkids, the dogs, the garden, the castle, the parents, the inheritance, the legacy, the last name, all of it. Taking care of your family, your community. It's like a very royal kind of card. Underneath that, I'm just taking a peek. Two of Pentacles, juggling. 
trying to maintain balance and harmony, being really busy, especially with work. It's a lot of communications going in and out. Um, then the devil card could be a Capricorn, could be ego, lust, control issues, addictions, all these types of things that go with the devil, get temptation. And then there's the Hierophant, could be a Taurus, could be something to do with faith or marriage even. Yeah, double marriage here. Get the Hierophant and the Justice card because they both can represent marriage. One representing faith, one representing justice. And then a reunion. And then when I get this card, another Virgo energy. When you get the High Priestess, you kind of get this energy of when I do a reading for myself, it's like you already know the answer. Because she's the Keeper of Secrets. She's the Wisdom Woman. And uh, she sees the spirit world. She sees what's going on, the things we don't see. So she's someone who's empowered by the secret. And then it goes on and on. Page of Pentacles, some news or student type, leaving a sad situation, waiting for a response. Just all these kind of cards. Okay, so it goes on and on and on. I think we got too far, though, gone too far here. Let's pull some Oracle cards. This is Colette Baron Reed's Wisdom of the Oracle Oracle cards. And let's pull one card for Gemini. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 11th to the 17th, please. I'm going to read you the general message as well as the relationship message. to go time to go all right on the bottom we've got breathe let's read time to go 45 endings completion walking away from something because there is nothing else to learn or experience the Oracle's message, you are at the begin at the end of one journey and have not yet begun the next. This is the moment to bless your experience thus far. Take stock of what you've learned. It's time to move on to new experiences and add a new way of being. There is nothing left for you to do to do, be, or experience in your present circumstances. Take the risk and move on, even if you need to be in transition for a time. Your destiny is calling you. The relationship message. It's over, or at the very least, the form this relationship has taken is no longer of service to you or the other person. This is a time of letting go, of knowing that the journey has come to its conclusion. That doesn't mean anything is lost. Although this card could speak to a breakup, drifting apart, or the end of a soul contract, it is more about release than destruction. Remember the saying, if you love something, let it go. If it comes back, it's yours. If not, it never was. Endings are always a sign of new beginnings. If you want something deeper, walk away. All right. So that's a very clear message where it leaves no room for interpretation. You're hoping for this death card. Now that makes sense, right? You're hoping for this to end. This being stuck challenged by this lack of faith being also this is the card of being left out in the cold okay waiting for someone who's left you out in the cold spying on them watching them you're restricted by fear because you can't you can't do anything about this also you're closed off and unreceptive that's the energy either that or the person is either way nothing's happening hoping for this to be over now it's saying it's time to go. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's like it's done. But let's see what the romance angels have to say about this. <clears throat> Can we get a card for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 11th to 17th? Can we get a card, please, for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 11th to the 17th?
Oh gosh, so many. On the bottom, we've got chemistry. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. So we got two cards. It is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. And that's speaking to being closed off. So it's saying it's safe for you to love. Open your heart. Past life relationship. You have known each other before, which is speaking to this card as well. It's saying your karmic contract is over. To let it go. Time to go. Okay, let's put these out. Okay, so I'm going to read both those. Safe. Okay, so it is safe for you to love. It says, open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. This card indicates that you're protecting your heart from hurt because of painful relationship experiences. However, the angels can only bring as much romance as you'll allow inside. If you have a shield around your heart, how is love to get in? Um, a closed heart repels the sensitive partner you're trying to atta attract. I was trying to attack. Sorry, trying to attract. Following your inner guidance will protect you and simultaneously allow you to feel loved and loving. Trust your intuitive senses with respect to other people's trustworthiness and open your heart to those who are kind and gentle. Ask the angels to bring caring individuals, including a romantic partner, into your life, and they'll do so, provided that you listen to and follow their guidance. Past life relationship. The romance angels have sent you this card to explain the relationship you've inquired about. You have some unfinished business in conjunction with a soulmate from a past lifetime. This may involve forgiving someone, a joint project, a learning or learning personal lessons such as patience. Soulmates recognize each other instantly and this feeling is often registered as a sense of romantic or sexual chemistry. The magnetism that draws two people together can surpass logic because the purpose of the relationship is healing and learning. Whether or not your soulmate becomes your life partner, you'll experience personal and spiritual lessons and growth as a result. Past life regressions can also help you uncover the answers you seek. Okay, so that's straightforward. It was, it's saying, you know, it's just speaking again to this being closed off, right? Energy. And... Whoever this person is that you will need release from, that you are like restricted or you're stuck in and you're watching and you wish for like this death to come to finish it. Okay, I hope you're not wishing them death because that's not nice. So maybe, uh, you know, hoping for the death and ending to this kind of suffering here. Okay, this sacrifice. It's saying it's a past life relationship. This is saying the karma from the past life now is done. Time to move on. Time to go. Um, so we're going to read from, sorry, Whispers of Love. Last Oracle card. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February 11th to the 17th. bottom love endures love does not give up or lose faith love is hopeful and withstands every stalker situation okay love endures it's saying it withstands every situation now hmm, forgiveness nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments i'm gonna put this here next to this death card here okay and we'll put this there. Love endures. Okay. 29. 
saying forgiveness. Nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments. Being willing to forgive yourself and others opens the door to the opportunity of future growth. Love will be restored and trust can be rebuilt. Move from a place of bitterness back to the joy that you deserve in your life. I'll read Love Endures, 43. Because it's not, I don't think it's what you think it is. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. No matter what is going on, you are being reminded that love can endure all things. Take positive steps to help create the change necessary to get through this. Release your fear and recognize that this love will last. Take a step back so you are more able to remember this truth. Love lasts. Okay. Hmm. Time to go. Okay, it's saying karmic contracts are over. It's safe for you to love again. Yes. Okay, so it's saying with this spread, the restrictions, the fear, the waiting around, the watching, all this time, waiting for it to end. And I really hope it's not waiting for somebody to, you know, get hurt or something. I don't know because of this death card here. Because this chariot card also has this kind of energy of going into battle, right? Which is ridiculous. Um, it looks like this situation should have been over a long time ago, but it hasn't been because you've been stuck on it with this hangman energy stuck, restricted, closed off, unreceptive, not trusting, lack of faith. It's saying it's safe for you to open up and find someone and attract someone with gentle, kinder, better friends, better circle of people around you to look for something more meaningful because you will attract that as soon as you change yourself a little bit to what you're looking for. That these two cards are saying the karma is over to let this person go. Now here you've got forgiveness because it's speaking to whatever has gone on here is the need to forgive yourself, forgive other people and move on. Nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments. And then it goes, in the end though, love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstand. That could be speaking to, you know, this stalker energy over here with the Page of Swords. You're like, yeah, that's nice. It's over. Mm -hmm. That's nice. But I'm going to keep watching and I'm going to keep doing this. And I'm going to keep staying in this hangman energy. And I'm going to keep watching this person, you know, until somebody dies. Do you know what I mean? Like that, this, this crazy local energy here. Forgiveness, love endures, or it could take it in a nicer way of whatever you share with people. It's not a waste of time. Everything is a learning experience and then you move forward. When the karmic is did, but forgiving, opening up to new things, being around more positive people to attract a more positive outcome. That was the reading for February 11th to the 17th, Gemini. Hope that made sense and resonated for you. Until next time, I will, um, I, I'm also going to do a Valentine's Day reading for everybody, just for the 14th to the 15th. I also have your February monthly love readings up and the bi-weekly generals up, so please check those out. They'll be linked at the end of this video, and I have some tarot haul videos too, tarot haul one and two that you can check out if you want to see some new tarot decks that I picked up. And uh, some crystals and little knickknacks that I've picked up as well. And I'm going to also make another video of a couple of new tarot decks that I just got today, actually, in the mail. All right. So until next time, please take care of yourself. Take care.